the cash and the tricks and the cash and the tricks and the love the love. No, he isn't here. I know Mr. Selby wants him by, but I can't send him up if he isn't here, can I? Well, he's in the building somewhere, I'm sure of it. He's hardly likely to... Yep. All right, I'll tell him. Right. Is he here? I can't find him. Search the building for him. He phoned in an hour ago from Elvino's to say he'd be back in ten minutes. Then he's probably been knocked over. Oh, you're a great help. Do you know what the statistics are on accidents between the hours of five and six in the afternoon? It could be increased by one at any moment. Hello, is that the George? Ah, uh, Jenny, is Mr. Clancy there? Or has he been in? Thank you. Yes. No, he is near, Bob. Well, I don't know. We're looking for him. Yeah, we'll join the queue, so is everybody else. Right, yes. I'll tell him. Bye. Which of these do you prefer? Why well, ask me? Because you're an average reader of the star. I wouldn't use it for wrapping fish, let alone read it. Oh, sure. Oh, hello. Is that the Savoy? Has Mr. Clancy returned yet? All right, thank you. That one. Why? Ted, average readers don't know why. You should know that. <laughs> They've neither the intelligence nor the inclination for anything beyond the simplest of crossword puzzles. They go out, they wouldn't be reading the star in the first place. Hello, yes? Ah, I see. Right. Thank you. Well, he hasn't returned to the Savoy, either. Oh, have you tried the ship? He was wont to leave his spoor there on occasion. I've tried every pub in Fleet Street. Nobody's seen him or his spoor. Have you tried Dickhole's flat? It's the first place I tried. No answer. Well, if Dick's just back from Saigon, they're probably out having a ha 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 together. Have you ever known our editor to be out and the paper's going to press? No, but you and I know there is a row brewing between him and Dick Holtz, and he could be talking to him over a pint. Editor's office. Mr. Clancy's secretary speaking. Who? The police. Oh, my God, there's been an accident, hasn't there? Well, we've been trying to find him. Mr. Clancy. Uh, just a minute, I I'm getting confused. Has Mr. Clancy had an accident or not? I see. Oh, we've been looking for him. I'm speaking for Mr. Holt's flat. Mr. Holt? Oh, my God. Just a minute. Give me details. Yes, right, I've got that. I'll tell him the moment he comes in. A letter. Yes, well... Perhaps you could bring that round. Thank you. God almighty. Dick. Apparently there's a letter from Mr. Clancy. I've got to find him. Dick Holt. Shit. You better get hold of Selby. Oh, yes, go, sir. No, hang on, hang on, here he is. Does this newspaper have an editor or not? I'm afraid we can't find him. What? The police just rang. The Colt's dead. When? Well, I don't know. Somebody found him. It was suicide. He cut his throat. Apparently, there's a letter from Mr. Clancy. The police are bringing it round. Have you tried Mrs. Clancy? Well, I, I didn't like Try her. Oh, there's no use. He, he won't be there. They're separated. He's living at the Savoy. Miss Corbin, I am no less aware of my editor's private life than you are. Now, call Mrs. Clancy, will you? Yes, sir. Why the hell would Dick Hope do a thing like that? A woman? No. Or could be. He must have been at the limit about something. What's the front page? George Brown's resignation. Well, you better come up to my office and bring the news editor with you, will you? Mrs. Clancy? Oh, hello, Susan Colgill here. It's right there. 
Uh, no, we, we can't find him. We thought... Yes, we know he's not living there anymore, but we tried the Savoy and he's not there. I... Penny, just a moment. You... Penny, I, I think you ought to know. Dick Holt committed suicide. Penny, are you there? No, I'm afraid we don't know any details. Simply that there's a letter. You hung up. Do you think it could be over the Shandong story? Call her back in ten minutes, will you, and see she's all right. And when Frank comes in, send him up to me. Will you tell him, or shall I? You tell him and then send him up. They grew up together. I was killing. Of course. What's the matter? Well, that's why we can't find him. He knows. He must have gone there before. But then where is he? Where is he? Full stop. Paragraph. In what sense, then, can this present Labour administration be said to have lost its faith in the British working class? Twenty years ago, when we introduced the National Health Service, we... By the time this issue of Vanguard goes to press, the story of the Chandong massacre will already be part of the shameful history of an odious war of intervention. Those who have tears to shed will already have shed them. Others will still be manufacturing excuses for the inexcusable. There was one victim of Chandong whose name will not be on the roll call of the village's dead though his death is as entwined with theirs as if he had gone down in the same pitiless holocaust. His name is Richard Holt. His assassins were not Americans, but fellow Britons. Their names will be well known to readers of this magazine. One of these names appears at the foot of this editorial, that of its new editor. Frank Clancy. The others? What a 
stop this door from the beginning. The beginning? Where do you start? How far back? End of the war? Ever a time of hope? What went wrong? Me. With us. Beginning of the war, perhaps. Morning. Morning, Mr. Uh, Vicar. Uh, you the uh, lad we promoted to the test room? Yes, Mr. Vicar. Well, work hard. You'll end up running the place. But it's uh, back to the bench in a month if you're no good. I thought I'd hire me down to the local Odeon tonight for nine pennyworth of Joan Crawford and Clark Gable. Are you doing anything tonight, Frankie? What is all that beneath your contempt? Someone her? No. Oh, I see. You require pabulum of a different order. What's pabulum? Mental manner. Intellectual protein. Oh, I can see you're not long for Britannia electric meters. <laughs> I know. Nobody else would have bothered to ask. That's okay, Frankie. Leg it down to point five. What do you really want to do with your life, Frankie? I'd like to be a reporter. Oh. You're not going to be one of the worker ants, then? No, not if I can help it. I think you'll make it. I got off the bench and came into the test room. The others are still there. Do you honestly think there are no council school youngsters out there who couldn't do the job you're doing? Foreman chose me. Oh, I He likes the way you speak. You've been to grammar school and you don't go dropping your H's all over the place. Yeah, don't let the dial slip, Frankie. I'm sorry. Don't you think some people have got more imagination than others? <laughs> I'll tell you the kind of imagination that gets people out of the rut in this country, laddie. The imagination to give themselves a fake social background, put on the right accent, and bluff their way a few steps up the class structure. Cheers. Thank you, Frankie. Well then, Frankie, what about the dancing lady? Pardon? Crawford and Gable. <laughs> Provided you don't think I will be corrupted by the false values of an alien class culture. <laughs> Not with me sitting next to you, laddie. Anyway, who said Joan Crawford was alien? You could land yourself in a punch-up outside the Mitchum Odeon making remarks like that, you know. Oh, aye. The working class won't stand by and see their idols made fun of. Ah, lad, uh, it's Clancy, isn't it? My chauffeur's off on an errand, and I'd like my rover sponge now. Take half an hour off, but if you do a right job, there's a couple of bob in it. I'm not paid to clean cars, Mr. Vickery. You'd better ask someone else. That wasn't too clever, laddie. Well, let him wash his own car. Oh, is that a matter of principle? Or are you just tired of working here? Oh, I didn't think about it. Well, I reckon that'll delay your promotion to the board of directors by about five years. You mean I'll be 25 instead of 20 when I get there? was worth it. <laughs> You've got some nerve. What would you have done? I don't know. With work the way it is at the moment, I'd probably have washed his car and refused his money. But you're older and wiser than I. No, I'm Scots and you're Irish. That's probably the difference. 
Well, let's get on with it. Nancy, pick up your cards and a week's wages from the cashier and get off the premises. You mean I've got a sack? Yeah, might call it that. You see, Frank, it's not enough to learn how to speak. You've got to play according to the rules. Well, sod him, then. Aye, well, this is a union matter. It's unjustifiable and vindictive dismissal. Well, bloody job anyway. That's all right for you, laddie, but we can't let a precedent like this go by. No, I shall be calling a union meeting during the break. I want you there, brother. Well, let's do it without me. Because I'm off. I don't owe unions anyway. So long. Bye. 